This picture of the sun might not look very impressive until you realize it was taken at night by a telescope that wasn't looking up at the night sky, but rather down through the earth pointing towards the sun. And it wasn't detecting lights, but instead it was measuring subatomic particles called neutrinos. Sounds like science fiction. It's actually science fact. Let's see how it works. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Miles, a physicist turned entrepreneur, and I'm interested in how we use science to improve the world and our understanding of the universe. Today, I wanna to talk about neutrinos, particularly strange subatomic particles that don't have much, potentially zero mass, a bit like a particle of light. They can pass through ceilings, walls, and planets without slowing down, and they can change what type of particle they are mid-flight in a process known as flavor oscillation which sounds delicious, but I'm told by experts isn't. Today, I wanna to focus on how we detect these ghost-like particles, which takes place in an observatory that looks basically like something straight out of every science fiction writer's imagination, a telescope under a mountain in Japan called Super Kamiokande, or Super K for short. But first, I wanna give a little bit of context as to why these particles are so difficult to detect in the first place. Neutrinos are created by various radioactive decays, and this is in fact how they were first theorized by Wolfgang Pauli in 1930, after James Chadwick noticed that electrons resulting from beta decays emerge with a continuous spectrum of energy, whereas theories at the time expected a specific energy of that emerging electron. Pauli wrote a letter to the Physical Institute in Zurich stating that he had hit upon a desperate remedy to save the exchange theorem, the possibility that there could exist in the nuclei electrically neutral particles that he called neutrons. At that point, the real neutron hadn't actually been discovered yet, and the mass of Pauli's neutron was many, many, many times smaller than the atomic neutron that was later discovered. So his particle was renamed neutrino, with eno meaning small. Neutrinos are really small. They're much smaller than any other known particle, excluding, I guess, massless particles, and carry no electric charge. So they aren't influenced by magnetic or electric fields. They predominantly interact with the universe via something called the nuclear weak force and gravity, I guess, to a certain extent. This means that neutrinos have practically no interaction with other particles. As a result, they can normally pass straight through most matter steel, lead, even entire stars or planets, unimpeded and undetected. So how do we, as curious scientists or observers of the universe, ever actually go about seeing them? Our current and most powerful tools that we have for reading the information in the cosmos rely on methods of directly detecting particles that are moving through it. For example, optical telescopes, even those as advanced as Hubble, make observations by directly detecting particles of light photons, absorbing them and converting that absorption into an electrical signal through something maybe like a charge capture device, a CCD, a photomultiplier, or a single photon detector. When we want to detect something that doesn't get absorbed easily, doesn't interact with matter or, or mass easily, we have to look for evidence that the particle leaves behind. One of the major experiments doing exactly that is Super K, a huge stainless steel tank filled with 50,000 tons of ultra purified water, built a kilometer underground in Kamioka mine in Japan. Its goal is to detect Cherenkov radiation emitted by passing neutrinos. Cherenkov radiation is an electromagnetic radiation, light, emitted when a charged particle, like an electron, passes through a medium at a speed greater than the phase velocity of light in that medium. Phase velocity just means the speed of light in the particular substance. Cherenkov radiation is also responsible for that blue glow that you see associated with nuclear reactors. Those are particles that are moving incredibly quickly, faster than the phase speed of light in water, and generating essentially booms of light emerging out of the tank. It's a similar principle as the sonic boom emitted by a fighter jet as it moves faster than the speed of sound. However, particles, instead of outrunning sound, are outrunning their own electric fields. And it isn't a sonic boom that occurs, but an optical one. For this reason, the inside of Super K is lined with hundreds of photomultipliers, sensitive enough that they could even detect light from a candle if it was held at the distance of the moon. 
The medium used in Super K is water because the speed of light in water is about three quarters of the speed of light in a vacuum. So you have a much higher probability of getting particles moving faster than it. Our problem here is, as we said at the beginning, neutrinos aren't a charged particle. They don't really like interacting with matter or mass around them. So we need to detect neutrinos passage by one of two reasonably rare events. In the first mechanism, we rely on a neutrino hitting and elastically scattering an electron in one of those water molecules contained in that vessel. And for that electron that does recoil, to recoil at a speed that is faster than the speed of light in water. That is over 500 million miles an hour in order to generate Cherenkov radiation. The second mechanism that we have to rely on is the neutrino interacting spontaneously with a weak force carrying particle which would cause it to convert into its equivalent lepton. That might be an electron, it might be a muon, or it might be a tau particle. Regardless of which one it is, those particles are all charged particles. And so, moving faster than the speed of light, they will generate also Cherenkov radiation. As you can imagine, these events don't happen all that often. The fact that we understand the universe well enough to have worked that out that they do in fact happen at all, and then built a detector that can actually prove that it does happen, is equal parts, I think, frightening and exciting about our capability to think about the universe. We are exceptionally clever monkeys, I guess it turns out. As a final point, we can tell where within this tank the neutrino was and the direction that it was traveling in, because Cherenkov radiation is emitted outward in a cone, allowing scientists to back solve for the location and the trajectory of the particle. And more or less, that is how we took a picture of the sun at night from inside a mountain, looking through the planet. If you like this, give the video a like and do subscribe to help me grow the channel. And you should check out this video I made on how a cosmic ray interfered with a speedrunner playing Super Mario. Pretty important stuff. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.